6.30, a little past the hour, and I just want to uh, praise God for uh, the opportunity to come together in, uh, in his word, in Hebrews. Speak a little louder. Um, in Hebrews, it tells us to forsake not to assemble together. And we're assembling. We're assembling on tonight um, for Bible study. Um, and so let us just uh, open up and pray. Father God, we come before you. We love you. We honor, we adore you for who you are. And Father God, we ask uh, for your blessings right now that you will come and dwell among us. Father God, uh, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to, in your sight uh, because you are our strength, you are my strength, and our redeemer. We ask, Father God, that those that are here, that you bless them, open up their hearts and their minds to receive, Father God, hallelujah. And then we ask those that are online to do the same. Uh, we ask you for these blessings and more. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 And um, tonight, uh, we're going to... Uh, my name is Deborah Levine, uh, Minister Levine, and I am uh, going to do an overview of where we've been in John. Uh, and so I'm going to ask for participation, um, and I'm going to try to speak up as well yeah. uh, so that you can hear me. So in the back, if I uh, begin to use my soft voice, just give me a thumbs up so that I can uh, project um, I, I might still have a military voice, um, but it's been used. So I'll try to use that, I'll try to use that. Um, so I'm gonna be asking for uh, sort of a call and response uh, using uh, the same handout, the same notes that we've been doing. And again, just doing uh, a review on John. So I should get a lot of response because we should have the answers. And we'll fill in the blanks for those that weren't here last week. There's a few of us that weren't here last week. So we'll fill in the blanks at that point. Um, so if you will get your handouts out and in page one, the introduction of the Gospel of John. Uh, in our outline, the part one is the incarnation of the Son of God. And this is verses one through 18, I believe, verses one through 18. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to talk about the writer of John. He was different. How was he different from the other writers of the gospel? He, he Who wrote, was he writing to? He, he took on the whole ministry of Jesus. So, and he's not uh, synoptic. Can you hear? Yeah, I can't hear you with your mask. I can't hear you with your with your mask. No. Oh, you can't hear me with my mask. I said he, he wrote the gospel, um, the whole ministry, three year ministry of Jesus Christ. And, and he wrote it for everybody. And he wrote it for everyone. Yeah. Very good, very good. So we're recalling um, what what we have learned, and then. Uh, what was the key thought throughout uh, the book of John? What were two key thoughts? Belief that uh, Jesus was God and, uh, yeah, belief that Jesus was God. And the other one, there's, there's two. So I'm looking for two words. Uh, one, I'll, I'll get you started by saying uh, faith was one thought that passes through. What was the other? Belief. belief. And belief. Faith, belief, and that we have the right to eternal life. Amen? Amen. 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 And um, I also uh, want to point out that the word, in, in the very first verse, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And who was the word? Who is John referring to as the word? Christ. Christ. Very good, very good. So we'll know as we see that uh, the word is referring to Christ. Um, I also wanted to point out that in the beginning, there was no article the. Why is that? Why is the word the missing? 
in the beginning? Because Jesus didn't have, he did not have a beginning in time. His beginning was in eternity, so there was no starting point, so to say. So there was no the, exactly right. There was no the uh, beginning because that depicts a place in time. And time didn't start or begin until creation. Am I right? Am I right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Time starts, started with the creation. So when God said, let there be light, that is when the beginning of time started. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that also refers to when we say God is Alpha and Omega, uh, there was nothing before God. So as far as time starts ticking, we're to remember the means the beginning of time. That's the article that starts, that starts the time, the beginning of creation. So the first event was creation. And the word logos, um, it is, what does that refer to? Word. Can someone tell me what the word logos means. You can Google the, it. The know. word. So our mother said the word, the word. So Jesus comes as the word in the New Testament. And yeah. so that's what it's, that's what it's referring to. Um, and so let's look at A in our handout uh, under number one. Uh, the answer is philosophic. And it says, uh, John said, uh, the Gnostic oh, so it was saying that um, John was Gnostic and that's not true uh, and so did he teach philosophically did he teach to the Gnostic um, they were saying that he was influenced by that but the truth is um, he did not teach to the to the Gnostics, he taught against it. So, what does Gnostic mean? Non-believers. Uh, not necessarily. Talking about people that uh, believe in like a secret knowledge, that there was some type of uh, knowledge out there that only they were, um, per they were able to perceive. And so it's good to know that, because John was accused of teaching to the Gnostic, and Gnostic also means that they believed uh, in more than one God. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And John did not uh, teach that there was more than one God. He taught mono, that it was just one God. Mm -hmm. So we uh, need to be aware of that, um, that when we hear just you know out in the world uh, that someone's a Gnostic, we need to know what we're calling them or what we're saying or what we're labeling them too. Mm -hmm. And so they believe that they have uh, power, they believe in more than one God, uh, that they have these, these special powers. Uh, in B, Bravo, it says some believe John was influenced by his Hebrew background. It's possible, probable that he was influenced, the blank is by his Hebrew background. And then it says, see over 12,000 times the Old Testament, uh, in the Old Testament, the word of the Lord was communicated. The word of the Lord. So we have to realize that in the Old Testament, uh, the word of the Lord was used. It was just used, the word of the Lord. But then when Jesus came in the New Testament, he came as the word and it applied to him. Amen. It applied to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, there are three uses of the word uh, in A under number two, instrument of communication, number three, uh, the meaning of God. It expresses Jesus as the meaning of God. And C, the word identifies. Um, the word is one of the titles of Jesus, which we've said before, and there is over 700 names for Jesus in the Bible. There's 700 names for Jesus. So we have to know 
uh, when the Bible is referring to Jesus. We have to know the author and what they call and who they call Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at uh, what is the meaning of with prose. Can someone give me that answer? With prose. So I'm looking at number three. We should have these answers. Can someone help me? The meaning of prose? This with is prose. I? With prose. So I'll, I'll go forward. It says face to face the word and God face to face. The relationship of the word with the father. So the word, the relationship with Jesus and the father. And so that's what uh, with prose is referring to in number three. And um, number four explains me. Yes, question, Mother? Because there were two separate entities, they could, they could, I can remember them. You got it, Mother. That they could come face to face. So, uh, oh, Mother was saying that there were two separate entities that they could come face to face. Face to face. Face to face. That's so it was God the Father, all. God the Son that could come face to face. Yes. Chaplain Benton used the relationship uh, of marriage. You gave us an example of mm -hmm. marriage uh, in the relationship where you have a husband and a wife and where they can come together and be as one, but they can also be face to face. Yes. So um, that, that was a good example. Um, they can be separate also. So this is an example of the, of the Trinity of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir, please add. Okay. It's, it's uh, talking in reference to when it says, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, with. God. Um, so it's, it's showing that the Word was always eternally there with God, and that the two of them were face to face. So it, um, just in case um, you couldn't hear uh, what the chaplain was saying, it was referring to in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So. The word has always been there. And it also says in Genesis, us, let us. Yeah. And so when it refers to let us, it's speaking to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. were all there Amen. at the beginning, at the beginning. So these are uh, clues and interpretations for us to know that Jesus was always with God. God has always been and always, always will be and that the Holy Spirit was present in the, in the beginning. So if we uh, question that, there, there's the answer. Amen. There's the answer. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it says number four to explain uh, the word was God. And then if you'll go down to the blank, it says equal in nature, separate in purpose, in person, I'm sorry, but subjective in duty. Submissive, Submissive in duty. I'm sorry. <coughs> Thank you. How y'all gonna help me with that, but won't help me with the blame? <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's say that again, just for clarity. Equal in nature, mm -hmm. the same in nature. Separate in person, mm -hmm. but submissive in duty. So again, explaining the Trinity and how it, and how it works. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at number six, because we've explained the beginning, I believe. Uh, 10 statements about the word. So number one, it talks about eternal. And it says, in the beginning is not a reference of time, but to eternity. Mm -hmm. That's what the beginning means in the beginning. It's not a reference to time, but a reference to eternity. Um, it means eternal. And then number two, uh, the personality of the word is seen in person. So this is verse one and 11. Can someone read that Genesis? Uh, I'm sorry, John verse one and 11. It talks about the person. To his own, and his own people did not receive him. So this is talking about uh, Christ being rejected. Mm -hmm. 
at, at that particular time, that he came as a person to this earth, but he was rejected by his own. So sometimes we feel re rejected by our own. So don't feel like you're in the boat alone. Christ understood that feeling. He understood that rejection uh, because he was rejected by his own. Um, let's look at number three. I'm on page two. Um, the word has an active communication with God. We talked about the face to face. The word is separate from God. For uh, there are two uh, centers of consciousness. Can someone explain that to you? What does it mean that there's two centers? Of Well, Sister uh, Minister Deb, it says face to face, but I'm thinking that we don't need anyone to communicate with our Father for us. We can be face to face with Him in the Spirit by just talking to Him and believing in Him. I'm not sure if I'm on the right track or not. <laughs> so uh, that, that we do have a straight line. We right. don't. We do not need. Uh, it is good to have intercessory prayer or intercessors on our behalf. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, we're not in the right mindset to pray for ourselves or to know to pray for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But God allows us to intercede. That is true. But this is in reference to two, two different consciousness. Can you help me? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, in reference to God the Father and God the Son. He's writing against people that don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. So he's taking us back to the eternal beginning and saying that in the eternal beginning, Jesus, or excuse me, God the Father and God the Son were face to face. So showing that they've always existed together in eternity. There wasn't just, there's one God, but two consciences, which shows that there's one God in nature, but two persons in their personality. So he's showing the distinction, even though there's only one God. Very good, so then he answers uh, number five and number six with, with his answering the question. Uh, the word is deity, that uh, what God is, is the word. And number six, the word is the Father, and the Father are one, mm -hmm. we, we talked about that. And they are separate, but one. So, um, a lot of times people have a hard time making the distinction and what the Trinity is. It, um, but I would, I would suggest to you to continue to read, to con continue to dig, to understand how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. So I had uh, an example to try to teach the kids, the little ones, to simplify the Trinity, and so what I used was a wheel, a wheel like on a bicycle or a wheel on the car. So the wheel has uh, the outside tire, the rubber piece, it also has a tube in the inside, and it also has a rim where the spokes are. I'm, I'm thinking of a, a bicycle. And so collectively, it is one. Can you see how collectively? It is a will mm -hmm. as one. So it is God as one. But each piece of that will has its own personality. It has its own person. It has its own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of clarify mm -hmm. the Trinity? Amen. Because God's not the author of confusion. And I don't want uh, us to be confused by, by the Trinity three being one. And so a lot of times uh, when we're being questioned about our faith, then that question will come up. Well, how can it be three gods in one? How can they be the same? That kind of thing. So if you, if you can regurgitate that will, then um, you'll be able to explain to them that uh, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy well, the key ingredient to all of that is spirits. People look at it in the flesh and not looking at it in the spirit. Right. What God is, the Word is. Yes. And what the Word is, the Holy Spirit is. Yeah. And so it's three different entities, and that's the reason why they call it a deity. Three different entities, three different 
personalities, but the same God. Yes. And and it you don't look at it as looking at you, Sister Savato, and me as being three different people. Look at it as being as God, one, being as one. And you have to look at it in the spirit. And 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 that would help people, I think, sometimes. They miss the spirit part. They look at flesh. They don't look at spirit. But you also have to know that we're visual people. We, you know, we have we touch and, and feeling kind of people. Too. And and true, we have to be careful with our feelings. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful uh, with the touchy feely thing, because this is spiritual. Good point, brother Levine. Good point. Yes, ma'am. My go-to when I was explaining the Trinity was an egg. Everybody is familiar with the egg. With an egg. Explain it so with an egg. It's yes. Got an outside. And she inside. Oh, you had to move that mass down. Okay. I said I, I, I use an egg. Right. You have the outside part shell and the two entities inside all making one egg. Yeah. And they are definitely separate. Amen. So, mm -hmm. and, yes, sir. And, and I hear what everyone is saying, but I would venture what Minister Levine is, is, is also saying, in that all of these examples would be inaccurate because in the same way that an egg, all of those things are, are right, but uh, the difference is, is with the Trinity, all of them are the same thing at the same time. So some people use H2O, and they say that there's you know solid, liquid, and gas. Yeah. But the members of the Trinity are all, all of oh, them would be solid, yeah. all, all of them would be liquid, liquid and all, all of them would be gas. gas. Exactly. Yeah. But water cannot be the same thing at all different times. It's either gonna be water, it's gonna be liquid, or it's gonna be gas, but it can't be all three all at the same time. That's the right. reason God is distinct and unique and there's nothing that can be a, a really good example of him is because everything that God is, the Son is. So yeah. if God is the yoke, then Jesus is the yoke. The Holy Spirit is the yoke. So one of them cannot be separated into one particular part of an egg, a wheel, a water, or anything. And those examples are actually go against what John was actually teaching about because there's nothing that can describe God. He's a plural unity. So there's yeah. nothing that would accurately describe him. So in just in, in honesty, the best thing to do would just be to point people to what the Bible says. Any example that we use will actually lead people to an inaccurate understanding of how to describe him because there's nothing on earth that describes something that was created by God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Spirit is the key. Amen. Spirit is the key. That's the key to say spirit. I agree. Amen. Amen. So let's look at number seven. It says the word expresses God. Um, if you know, if you want to know what God would do on earth. So it says the spirit expresses God. And if you want to know what God would do on earth. So this is in reference to chapter one of verse 18. And it says no man has seen that any time, and I'm reading the King James, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So uh, no man has seen God. The unseen God is what John is referring to here. And, um, but we have seen the beloved Son. And so oneness is with the Father. And so that's what he's declaring. In the bosom is the oneness with the Father. So again, this is the uh, 18th chapter. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, and he has declared him. Amen. Amen. All right. Any comments? Any questions so far? Amen. So if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Amen. That's the closest you're going to get. Can we see God? Or what will happen if we see God? If you've seen Jesus, if you know Jesus, you know God. Can we see God? No, I'm asking a question. If you know I'm God. asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see God? Well, Can no. we lay our physical eyes on God? No. no. Why? We can see his presence in the wind. We can see his presence in... Um, his word, but to lay your eyes on him, no. Why? 
Because, because you'll die. Amen. Amen. That's what I was trying to get to. Good, good. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. So we cannot lay our physical eyes because of his glory, because of who God is. If we physically see God, Mother said we can see his presence. We can feel his presence. We can know that God is here. Uh, but if we lay our eyes on God, and even looking at Moses in the presence of God, what happened to him? He changed. Yes, he did. His, the way he looked changed. Yes. And it's because of God's glory, because of God's glory. Uh, in my opinion, he was just too close to God. And it affected, it affected him. Amen. Amen. So um, let's talk about pre-incarnation uh, versus incarnation. The pre incarnated is the Messiah. It's spoke of as the Messiah. It showed up in the Old Testament. So, pre incarnation means, excuse me, I feel the sneeze. Um, with me. Pre-incarnation means that Jesus always existed. Yes, he when, existed. So, in the beginning, Jesus was there. But mm -hmm. incarnation means what? He really walked in the flesh here on earth. When he walked in the flesh here on earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Very good. Very good. Uh, so Jesus pre-existed, Jesus was, um, and all, always has existed. Um, and let's, let's look at number nine. The, the word lived in a tent of flesh among men. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? The word lives in a tent. Among men. What is that? Well, we had flesh and tabernacle here. Uh, in the flesh, among men. When he came. Amen. Amen. So what does the tabernacle mean? It took on earthly things. Something that I could see, something that I could put my hand on. Amen. In the human flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, the Word is the Son of God the Father. The Psalm 2, the Son is called the begotten Son. What does that mean? How is he, or why is he called in Psalms 2 the begotten Son? So look at uh, Psalms 2, I think it's, Verse 1, chapter 1, and verse 18. Chapter 1? Verse 18. There's no 18 in there. No, that's John 1 18 that you're talking about. You have to read Psalms. Is it in the whole Psalms? Psalms 2. You want to read the whole Psalms? So this is uh, a, a divine witness, a declaration that God is the Son, the begotten Son. The Son of God is the begotten Son. I guess I should, I should say it like that. So let's go into part two, the uh, pre-incarnation work of Christ. And we want to discuss verse, back in John, verse 3 through 5. And if someone will read those verses for us. 
chapter one or chapter what? Chapter one. Verses three through three. five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got the NIV version. Mm -hmm. um, it said, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. <coughs> In him was life, and that life was the life of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, Bible. Brother Levine. Explain. Explain it. But it is saying that when Jesus, to let you know that he was here from the beginning, he was with God. Offering that was made and nothing made uh, was made without him. Mm -hmm. And then it says that in him was life, and that light was the light of men. Jesus was the salvation of men. And he came for a special purpose. He really came for his people, but his people, that's the darkness that didn't understand it. We here on this planet didn't understand why he came. At least some of us didn't understand why he came. Let me make it a little bit more clear. Uh, and, and for that reason, a lot of good things happened. A lot of good things happened. We ended up getting saved uh, just a little bit down the road. But uh, he came back to save man from himself. You know, this is also explaining that Jesus is light. He is the light. Say the light. Okay, the light. And. I'm sorry. Um, Jesus is the light, the light, and he gave the life and the light to his creation. So who is his creation? We are. We, we are. are. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. Yeah. His and energy is in everything. His awesome. energy is everywhere and mm -hmm. in everything. And if that light and that energy is not there in whatever it is, it is darkness and it is death. It is death. So we we are blessed because Jesus is the light and the light, and He gave it to us. That is our that is our blessing, and and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and so that's that energy, a part of that energy that dwells within us, and so we should uh, be excited and get excited that we have that part of our creator, that we have that gift from God. And how do we know? Because the word tells us right here. Yeah. That's how we know. And um, so a, a lot of times when I'm praying, I ask uh, to, to able me to tap in to that, to that energy, to that spirit, able me to tap into that. Because we have a portion of that. And every day God gives us a new portion. We don't have to savor it, what he gave us for yesterday. Whatever slice he gave us for today, use it all up because he's going to give us a new portion tomorrow. We don't, we don't need it. So, um, yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, then four it says, in him was life, L-I-F-E, and that life, L-I-F-E, was the light of men. So, I know he's in everything, but uh, wasn't he specifically talking about man? The light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So what is the darkness? The sin? Unbelief. Unbelief is, is Unbelief. Uh, and that's a good word. Uh, uh, those who didn't believe. And your question? Well, is that a question I was just making a statement. It seems, it's a statement. Well, you, you guys were saying that life is, he's in everything, and he is. Yes. That's not, but I the thought energy. this was more specifically catered or, or defining man himself than, than uh, all of creation. I, I understand all of creation. It says nothing that was made was made without him. So that's all, everything that was made. I get that. But the light of men, so the heart of man didn't understand it. 
Amen. So I want to read D. It says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men, what you just said. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness was not understood. Number one, life was the light. They are different, but he is the source of light. Shine to help others and to call attention to. Jesus shined to draw attention to himself. And then why did Jesus call attention to himself? Because he was the light. No one can get through the Father unless they go through him. So he had to draw attention unto himself to show them the way to get to the Father. That's right. To point and to show the way. And, and he was the way. So he it's like was the way. He is the way. We don't have service and walk around in darkness. That's right. We turn on the light. And the light is to, is to show what's in there in the darkness. That's right. So Jesus, the, the, what John is trying to say is, hey, Jesus is the light. But the reason that he's the light is to draw attention to himself because in him is life. So if we want eternal life, which is the whole point that the book is being written, that, you know, he says in uh, John 20 and 31 that these things are written that you might believe that he is the Christ and that believing you might have life in him. Amen. So he's shining the light to draw attention to himself. Amen. But here he is. It's like we walking around in darkness. Jesus shines the light to say, hey, look at me. If you can believe in me, you can have life. But here he is. It's like the light cuts on in the chapel, but nobody still sees what's going on inside. So that's what John is really trying to break down. Amen. 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 So uh, let's move forward to uh, the forerunner of Christ. And so if someone will read verse 6 through 8, please, of John. I'll be reading from the King James. It reads. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So in, in this day when this was written, or, or before, uh, folks thought that John, was the light. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Baptist. We're talking John the Baptist. The Baptist part Good of point. It. John the Baptist <laughs> right. was Christ. Exactly. But John the Baptist had to make sure that it was understood mm -hmm. that I, I'm just the point the way. I'm just the forerunner. I am not the Christ. The Christ is yet to come. And so we need to make sure uh, that, that we understand that John was just, like it says here, a forerunner and a witness to what was to come and what, what, what was to be. Uh, Christ was already here on earth for sure, but uh, people didn't understand that. And they wanted to follow John and call him the Christ when he, John the Baptist, and call him the Christ when he wasn't. So uh, it says here that 20 times um, uh, the name John is used in the book but uh, never used for the author. So it's, that's a good point to understand when you're reading the book of John. If you see the name John, it is speaking to John, John, the, Baptist. Baptist. John the Baptist and not yeah. John the author. Amen. 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 So, um, there was a cult that began to worship, here we go, John the Baptist. And uh, this book counter uh, influences that. So the book of John says, no, not, we're not here to worship John the, the Baptist. We're not to be a cult, uh, but a follower of Jesus Christ. And then, um, it says that um, from the word, and I cannot say it, ap, help me say it, apesta, apesta malos means sent. And that means the one 
sent from God. And so John is saying, there's one that God sent. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not me that is the Christ. And uh, John the Baptist um, had a miraculous birth, uh, not of a virgin, but remember when uh, Mary and her cousin Elizabeth were together, uh, even in the womb, John the Baptist recognized that Jesus was the Christ. And so he leaped, he leaped in, the, in the womb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, uh, John knew from before birth. You know, we, we would say he knew at birth, but he knew before birth, even in the womb, that uh, Jesus was the Christ and that Mary was carrying uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, witness, he came to bear witness of the light. And to who are we talking about here? John the Baptist. We're still the forerunner. We're still on the forerunner. He came to bear witness of the light, to the light. And um, we use the example, um, and Chaplin just said that too, that we could turn the light on, but we still can't, we can't see. But the one thing about the light and the darkness is that the darkness can't overpower the light. So anytime the light enters darkness, uh, darkness has to flee, so to speak. So know that the light is, has power over darkness. So um, we know the difference between the two, but when you turn on a light in a dark room physically, and it's the same way spiritually. The light defeats the darkness every time, every time. So um, let's look at uh, rejection of Christ. So we read in the scripture where um, he was rejected by his own. Um, that was probably uh, not such a good feeling. Um, we don't like rejection, so I'm sure if you you know your purpose, that you came uh, to save those that were lost, uh, and then you're rejected by those that you came to save. You're rejected by your own, your own flesh and blood, your own people, your own kin. Chosen people. people. Say again? Mm. Chosen, chosen people. Your own chosen people, your own kin folks, <laughs> your cousins, mm. you know? You're, you're, if you're rejected, um, it, it, it's not a good feeling. And it was a sad thing. It was a sad thing. And uh, Christ is even rejected today. And he still loves us. He still loves us. So we, if we think about our lives and how long it took us to receive Christ, to accept Christ, uh, prior to that, we were rejected, whether we knew it or not. That's what we were doing. We were rejected. To the rejection of Christ, um, verses 9 through 11. Can I get a reader, please? Chapter 1, still. Good. 9 through 11? Yes. I'm reading from the um, King James Version. Mm -hmm. There was a true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Is that right there? Verse 11, yeah. yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Two, he came for rejection. Um, he came to the Jews, the chosen people, and they received him not. Um, and there was one other thing uh, we were talking about. He was received in the welcoming of, of Christ. So he was welcomed. Uh, we, we celebrate Palm Sunday, and, and he was welcomed in. But how long after that? <coughs> The, the very same people that were laying down the palms, the very same people.
people that were parading and excited as he came. Hosanna, in. Hosanna. <laughs> Shouting Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. 24 hours later, they were talking about crucifying. crucifying. Those very same people were in the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him. When they had a choice to say no, when they had a choice to say Jesus or Barabbas, who did they choose? They turned their back on Jesus the Christ. And to, uh, in, in that passage of scripture, it's also talking about um, the people as a whole rejected Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really sad. It's really sad to know. And, and then what will we do? What will we do today? You know, I can look and point the finger, yeah. but what side would I be on? If Jesus walked through the door mm. today, mm. Mm. what would I say? Yeah. If you what feel I, with the Spirit, you will know who he is. Mm -hmm. He says if you're filled with the Spirit, you would know. If you, if you feel and, with and, the Spirit, and you, you are to try the Spirit by the Spirit. I agree with that. But um, in this day and time, we, give, we get so many choices, we have so many freedoms, and if Jesus comes back, are we gonna choose him? Are we gonna still stand on what we believe? Or is this just all for show? I would like to inject something in there. You said if you feel with the Holy Spirit, if you would feel with the Holy Spirit, you would know because your spirit would identify Mm -hmm. Well, what happened when John was in prison and he sent his disciples to ask him, are you really the one? Now, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, both men, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. They were both sent from God. They both had the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, but John said, if you are the Christ, I need to know. So explain that to me. John, I think, no, you, you, you do it because. Yeah. yeah, John began to doubt, you know, and, and the tragedy is none, none of the people were filled with the Holy Spirit at this time. That didn't happen until Acts 2. That's the key. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the tragedy is you had yeah. all these Jews who were claiming to be experts in the law studying scripture all of their life and then he, so you're studying the word reading the word and then when the word shows up you don't recognize it. Yeah. not only do you not recognize them you crucify them. you know so that was the tragedy and it's, and it's easy to make fun of them but the same thing can happen nowadays we can be yeah. sitting in church yes. reading the bible yeah. worshiping god yes. and then when his presence shows up in our life we don't recognize yeah. it yeah. so yeah. the yeah. whole point of john writing is so that people might believe so that even without having the Holy Spirit, because that's what we're here to reach. We're not here to show Jesus to people that already have him living on the inside. Our responsibility as disciples of Jesus Christ is to show him to the world that does not have the light and is in darkness. So we are like John the Baptist. We are people that are going out trying to turn on the light so that they can see that Jesus is there and that he has the power to give them light. But we don't want to make the same mistake the Jews did in that we're reading the word, teaching the word, you know, and all that other good stuff. And then when he shows up, we still reject him, um, you know, and, and, and don't, you know, realize that he's there. So it's really profound what he's saying, um, and we just got to be careful not to make the same mistake. And I also, like a lot of times I really try to watch that with myself because they really, these were not novices. These were really experts and people that knew the law back and forward, you know, but yet he shows up right in front of them and they miss it. So sometimes I wonder when I'm reading the word and, and listening what am I missing that, you know, later on other people be like, man, how could you miss that in the same way that we're looking at, you know, the Pharisees? So rather than, and I'm not saying that anybody is, but rather than us becoming arrogant and, and looking at them and saying, how could they miss it? It should cause us to be humble and say, God, help us not to make the same mistake that they made. If I give them any pause, though, let me relieve that one fact that they didn't have the whole no, they, they did not they have, did not the, Holy have the Holy Spirit. And that's the, if, if but you were any kind of thesis trying to defend what the Jews did, they was going strictly by the first five books of the Bible, the Old Testament, 
Jesus was not identified. He was a coming Messiah. We know him as the rock. We know him uh, uh, when, uh, what else, what, what was that other, when Jesus showed up and they didn't know who he was. Uh, when, when Moses struck the rock, God says, uh, talk to, speak to the rock and he'll give him water in the desert, but he struck him. And then he paid a price for that. Yes, but that was, right. that was Jesus that he was talking about. But the, the, because of the Holy Spirit being absent, they were arrogant in their ways, set in their ways. They've been there a long time now. And they had this power. And you know how it is with people in power. And, and, and traditions, it's hard to give it up. Amen. They, if they would have had the Holy Spirit, I think if well, we have John the Holy Baptist, Spirit. If, 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 he, if he leaked in his womb, he, he knew. And I know he wasn't conscious, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is the key thing to it all, there wasn't the Holy Spirit. You and I have the spirit of Christ in us. Mm -hmm. If we, we can tell a Christian before we get up to it, because all we have to do is speak to them, and we'll know they're a Christian. Because our spirit, Paul said, test the spirit with the spirit. You can tell people who love the Lord by their actions. Regardless, but regardless. I can read potions, and it opens up to me. And I have read it over and over in my life. And still yet, when I sit down for my devotion, he take the blinders off my eyes and show me a different meaning for my life. And I have the same Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me. So that is the living word. That is why That's the called, living word. That's why it's called the living word. Yes. Because it's not just words printed on paper. And so that's what it's revelation when you, when you see something new, when you dig deeper, uh, when it opens up your eyes, it, it's, uh, it's the living word, um, the light's coming on, uh, and it's yeah, a revelation. It is a living word. It it's, is it's, alive. It's, it, it is alive. It it's is alive. alive. Yeah. And so that's the, the only reason I can think of is that if you read a scripture, uh, simple scripture, Jesus wept. But when you came back to that scripture again, you may have just learned it as a kid, it's the shortest verse in the Bible. But when you read it as an adult, then you see why Jesus wept. You see where he was. Um, you have a better understanding. You, you have a clear view of the picture of, of what he was going through and what made him weep then it comes alive. And it's just not a memory verse that Jesus wept, that Jesus cried. And again, the, the living word. The living word is what the Bible is, and that's why we're to use it um, uh, on the daily. And that's why it's just important for us to get in and, and peel back the onion and use it on our day-to-day -day life uh, because it is a living word. It is a living word. Um, I also wanted to just sum up what you said we don't have an excuse uh, we because we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. And yes, the Word. Yeah. And the Word. And you know, it, the crazy thing is, and I, I really just thought I hadn't even studied this, John the Baptist was there at Jesus' baptism. And he seen the he, Holy he Spirit when it came yeah. down the So he heard the voice from God yeah, speaking right. from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm real pleased. He that's sees right. the dove coming in, descending on him, or the that's Holy right. Spirit descending like a dove. And yet when he gets in jail, He's like, are you the Christ? Mm -hmm. You know, so all of us, we can have the Holy Spirit and all this other stuff, but every one of us is going to have moments of doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, you, you get thrown in prison and, and have some, you know, let, you let your child or a close one bless you and you wonder where is God. But the wonderful thing about God is, is that he doesn't condemn John. He reminds him, says, hey, didn't you see the miracles? Didn't you see the baptism? And so I love God because even in those moments where we're doubting and we have those moments of frustration and we don't know where to turn, he doesn't dog us out. He comforts he sure us and he reminds he us yeah. instead of because, and that's the wonderful thing about the incarnation is that in coming here and living like a man, he knows how we feel. Yeah. If anybody knows what it's like to be betrayed or to be hurt, Jesus knows. And so when we get hurt or we feel betrayed or we have those frustrations and emotions, he can identify with that because he knows what it's like to be a man. And I think that's what he wanted us to see with John and why, that's why I love the honesty of the Bible. 
it never lied. It could have just left that whole part about John doubting out so John looks like a hero, but it allows us to see the ups of the people, what? but also the downs of the people, what? so that we don't feel so bad when we have yeah. those moments as well. It definitely shows Amen. a lot of despair on John's yeah. part because yeah. he was in prison, yeah. and those were dire times. And, and, and he ended up getting his hair chopped off. Exactly. And, and so, you know, sometimes when you're alone, the devil has time to do some, some stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's time to make some magic. And and John, you know, he, he kind of, but he was there. He yeah. seen the devil. Yeah. He heard God. Mm -hmm. and, but the Holy Spirit hadn't been left yet. So Jesus hadn't been dead. He hadn't died and hadn't been resurrected. So I'll give him, I'll give him a little bit of slack. I'll give him a little bit of slack. But you're right. He seen that dove and heard God speak. And they're like today, people reject Christ by choice. But his word says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So he draws men unto him, but the people that's being drawn, they have a choice to receive him. And we plant the seeds of the word and testimonies and everything we share about who Christ is to us. But people still have a choice whether they're going to receive the true living Christ, because he's still being rejected choice. today. He gives them a choice. Right. And God, they have a choice. God gives us a choice. He always he gives he's you a, always God giving gives us you a choice. choice. Is man? God, yeah. And then it's not us, it's not for us as believers to judge the people who Exactly. But we're supposed to continue to live for Christ. That's right. And it's amazing how it comes around. They might not believe today, but tomorrow because we water it. He makes the increase. All you do is spread the word. Faith. And then in the, yes. the Holy Spirit, that's what the, what the whole saying said. Right. All we got to do is get them in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit right. to clean them up. Yeah. That's all you got to do. <laughs> get them in the boat. The it's so true up. that one well, plants right, yes, yes. the seed. <laughs> yes. And so we should go around on the daily planting the seed. So what does that look like? That's right. What does that look like on the daily? Just us. Talk a little, Jesus. And when things fall apart in our lives, we can't fall apart. We got to. Show the world who we trust. But it's simpler than that. Yeah. As I go through the gate mm. and show my badge, if I just say, God bless you, if I just say, have a blessed day, yes. am I planting the seed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone could come behind me mm. and just say, God is good. They say, how are you doing today, ma'am? And you're showing them your ID card. And you can say, God is good. Mm -hmm. Someone can give the work. Then God will give the increase. Yes. God yes. will do the rest. So it's not hard. We try to make uh, discipleship. We try to, we, we make it hard. Um, but uh, uh, Sister Deb, you, you, you taught me something when we went camping once. You said, never forget to take, uh, never forget to take a praise opportunity. Ne never forget to take advantage of a praise opportunity because I was telling her a story about something, and she said, you didn't take advantage of that praise opportunity. Girl, that was a praise opportunity. And so in the daily, we're to never, never forget to take advantage of a praise opportunity. If somebody opens the door and say, how you doing today? There's your praise opportunity. Now, don't give them a sermon. You know, don't run them away from the Lord. But <laughs> drop a seed. Drop a seed and say, God is good. You know, God blessed me. God healed me. You know, take advantage of that. Take advantage of that opportunity. I'll, I'll never forget that. But there are things when we hear. I don't always yeah. take advantage of that right. praise opportunity, but we should. Yes. And we don't take it personal when they. Oh no. We can't take it personal no. because in Him we move and have our being. So we just we so let it flow. So we're to be the light. Yes, ma'am. We're be to the be light. the light. Be careful being the light. Once you confess. All eyes are on you. All eyes are on you. And so we're going to stop right here with the rejection of Christ. Oh, already? Uh, don't, don't, don't feel rejected, even if they reject you. Uh, give it to the Lord, you know, and, and pick your battles wisely. Amen. Amen. Fight Amen. your battles wisely. Uh, know that uh, most battles are not ours. It's the Lord's. Amen. And we have victory. From victory to victory. Right. And I believe that because God says so. Amen. 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 Any Amen. questions? Any concerns? You did good, Mom. Hallelujah. God Amen. bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Chaplain, Chaplain A, Chaplain Kibanka. Let's keep her sister Deborah in hand. So can we just bow in a word of prayer and then we'll dismiss. Father God, we come before you. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you that you're God Almighty, that you are the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Father God, uh, for this time that we can uh, learn to be more like you, Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love. We thank you for Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That gives us the opportunity. Hallelujah to be victorious and to have eternal life, Father God. We want to know what eternity looks like, Father God. And so we're digging into your word, Father God, so that we'll know, that we'll make the right choices, Father God, and that we'll be more and more like you. We ask that you, as we leave this place, never leave your presence, Father God. We ask that you take us home safely and watch over us as we sleep and slumber on tonight. And if you will allow us to rise in the morning, we'll praise you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless. So we pick up on the acceptance of Christ next week? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.